Thank you for participating today. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Gard and then go to questions. Again, for media, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, if you give us a brief opening statement, then we'll go to questions. All right. Um, first of all, obviously, congrats to Scott and, and his team. Obviously, it's a terrific team. Um, you know, I thought the first half we had some possessions get away from us that where they got a lead on us. And uh, proud of our guys, how we battled back in the second half. Um, obviously, got it to seven or six there once or twice. Um, but obviously, Baylor made some plays and some answered that with some key buckets at times or free throws. Um, but just got done with our team in the locker room and really thanked them for everything they've done for us, not only this year, but you know, I got a group of seniors that are that are uh, um, obviously going out the door and really appreciate all they've given us and what they've done for our program. So um, with that, I'll take any questions. Thanks, Coach, again for media. If you have a question, please use the raise hand function, and we'll get to as many folks as we can here in the time we have. Jim Polzine, your line is open. Please go ahead. Jim Polzin, Wisconsin State Journal. Greg, you, you talked a lot about their defensive pressure being one of their strengths yesterday. Um, do you think that overwhelmed your guys? Do you think it took maybe a, a half to, to get used to that? Well, obviously the numbers tell us we, we turn the ball over higher than normal. Um, and, and to obviously a team like that, we've got to maximize possessions. So I thought we did get, we got a little sped up early. Um, you know, tried to play a little too fast at times. Um, second half was, was a little bit better, but obviously 14 is double about what we've been averaging and, and they, they do a good job of their, uh, you know, they're athletic, they're strong. They can put a lot of pressure on at every position, specifically when they go smaller. Um, so that obviously was definitely played a factor in it. Jeff Patrakis, please go ahead. Jeff Patrikas, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, Greg, how would you summarize what this team went through this year and in terms of being, being able to battle with some top-tier teams but just not being able to break through? Well, I look at this at a deeper – it's bigger than basketball, Jeff. What, what these guys in this group – I've been doing this a long time and I've never been around a group that's had to endure more over the last – two plus years um you know going back to coach Moore and that whole uh tragedy uh, that they still carry with them obviously you know rallying and winning a piece of the conference championship last year having no tournament which was an emotional blow um you know and this year then having to navigate through a season in the middle of a pandemic and and uh have you know unprecedented discipline in terms of what they had to follow every day and the protocols I mean we're one of the few in the country that got through without any pauses or any issues. Um, so it, it really, as I just finished with them, I thanked them for all they've done for this program going beyond basketball and, and beyond even this year because that group of seniors obviously have, have been through a lot and they've had, you know, great jubilation and, and some, some uh, you know, some extreme trials. And as I told them, that's, that's life. Um, you're going to have some things go your way. And they're going to have some things not go your way. Um, but as long as you're doing the best you can and giving your best effort, that's all we can ask. And, and they definitely, every day, they gave us all they could, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, they were able to play in a tournament this year, get one win, who obviously wanted more. Um, but they, uh, there was never a, a, a deficiency of, of effort and, and giving of themselves to our program. Josh Schaefer, please go ahead. Josh Schaefer, Badger 24-7. Uh, Greg, Baylor's been considered one of the best teams in the country all year long. I was curious just where you thought they stacked up against some of the teams you guys played in the Big Ten this year and kind of what they posed as a matchup issue and how they stacked up as far as it goes as best teams in the in – the... Yeah, they're, they're similar um, to, to – uh, they're a little similar to Illinois. Um you know, minus minus the big guy inside. I know Illinois got knocked off today, but the guard play, I think, is what really stands out. Though that trio is exceptional. I think two of them are all Americans. You can see why. But I even thought the difference today was Meyer. The the plays he made off the bench when they needed baskets in the second half, he he answered for them. Um, but the, the guard play. I mean, when you have guard play that good, you you obviously will be one of the better teams in the country. Um, 
So from a backcourt standpoint, similar to, to some of the best teams that we see in our league, um, front line's a little different than what we see, but uh, um, those three guards are terrific. Tom Oates, please go ahead. Uh, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Greg, just from a basket, in a basketball sense, uh, going back to Jeff's question, you were competitive in so many of these losses, but couldn't quite get it done and fell short of your goals. Why do you think from a basketball sense that happened? I, I don't know if I have an exact one, one, if there's one answer to it, Tom. Uh, I think there's, I think it's a multitude of reasons. Um, you know, if I start listing reasons, it just sounds like excuses. But we, we had to be continue to be more consistent. You know, we had a run there in the first half where we allowed them to to, uh, to get some separation from us where, um, you know, we either didn't finish inside, we turned it over, they got loose in transition. Um, and, and against the best teams, you can't have inconsistencies in some of those areas. So that's that's probably one of the reasons um, against the, uh, you know, the best of the best. And obviously we've – we played, uh, you know, more than our share of, of the elite teams this year. Um, you have to be able to – our margin for error is slim as it is. And then when you get against, you know, the, the top tier in the country, your margin for error becomes almost non-existent. So you have to, you know, adhere to those, um, you know, guidelines, principles, whatever you want to call them, and, and have more consistency from possession to possession. Jeff Patrikas, please go ahead. Uh, Jeff Patrikas, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Greg, I'm not sure when we're going to get to talk to you next, and this obviously could be a transition year in terms of personnel. Um, where do you think this program stands right now in terms of probably most of these guys leaving and a lot of young new faces coming in and coming back as well? Right. Well, I think the older guys have done a really good job of putting the culture in the right spot and helping guide the younger guys. And that was the intention behind having, you know, a bigger, younger group coming, uh, be sitting kind of in the wings, learning from these guys. So um, they know there's going to be a lot of work. You know, this the the older guys didn't get to this point, um, you know, by by taking it easy. It, there's going to be a lot of work they're going to have to do in the off season. Um, you know, starting with you know, spring workouts and strength and conditioning into the summer, and hopefully we can get back to some sense of normalcy uh, in terms of off-season training, which I think is was key for us that we didn't have it last year or this past summer, and hopefully we, we can, you know, walk back into some sense of normalcy because the off-season is, is huge for everybody. It's ginormous for our program. We have to have that, that off-season strength and conditioning component. Um, not only just summer, but spring and into the fall in a in a hopefully a normal pattern where we can really help these guys prepare for what's coming. Next, we'll go to George B. George, please go ahead. Yeah, George Black, GNBC fifteen. Greg, late in the second half, you know, it was a close game, but then it seemed kind of like you guys were pushed away from your offensive system, kind of playing hero ball. Do you, did you see that yourself? And if so, what do you think caused that change in the offensive attack? The defensive pressure of Baylor. They went small and were switching everything and made it really hard to be able to get to where we wanted to get to. Um, so that was – I'll give credit to Baylor for – getting us out of what we wanted to do. Next, we'll go to Grant Flood. Grant, please go ahead. Hey, Coach. I am Grant Flood from Insider Institute. My question to you is that how did you keep your players motivated during halftime while trailing 42 to 29? Well, we knew we uh, had 20 more minutes. You know, make some adjustments on some things defensively. Try to uh, do a better job of taking care of the ball. Um, you know, finish inside when we had those opportunities, and and minimize the the miscues where Baylor was able to get some easy offense in the first half. So try to, you know, they knew we had another 20 minutes, and uh, and there was going to be 30 some possessions, and let's make sure we, uh, you know, try to attack that and and do better than what we did the first half. We have time for just a few more. Tom Oates, your line's open. Please go ahead. I'm Greg, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. You haven't used your two bigs together much against small lineups. 
You went to it in the second half. Uh, Why did you go to it, and what did you think it gave you? Uh, I went to it because they went with their two bigs, with Vital and and the other guy, Zero, in 23. So it, when they don't, when both of them are non-shooters, we can play that a little bit better. When they came back with Meyer, um, it obviously made it a lot harder to do that. So um, I, I thought it gave us some good, good. Uh, you know, it, we got some production out of it. But you know, Scott countered with going back and going small again. Um, so we had to we had to counter back to be able to chase Meyer around. Take two more, Lance Beeser. Lance, your line's open. Go ahead. Greg, just to follow up for a clarification on what Jeff asked you, are you operating on the presumption that none of your seniors are coming back? Some of them may come back. I mean, where do the, does that sit right now? I don't have any presumptions. I don't know. I'll give them some time to to uh, marinate from this and, and uh, you know, let the emotional sting of all this, uh, of the finality of a season, dissipate a little bit, and then I'll, I'll get a chance to talk to him. But right now, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to guess. We'll take our last one from Darius Joshua. Please go ahead. How are you doing, Coach? Uh, Darius Joshua, CBS 58 Milwaukee. Uh, kind of following up on an earlier question, you talked about the strange season. But I'm wondering, what, what will you remember most about these last two weeks where you're in Indianapolis for an extended period of time, obviously due to the new protocols, and obviously you're leaving a little bit earlier than you would like to? Well, obviously, a credit goes to our our medical people and and most specifically our players for getting us to this point where we could, you know, participate in postseason play. Um, and I don't think anybody in the outside realizes what these guys have had to follow since September, really, uh, to try to stay on a path to to stay safe. Obviously, first and foremost, but also put yourself in a position to to be able to play games. So. Um, I think I think we were accustomed to this routine. Um, maybe not quite the the lockdown or the quarantining or the you know uh, really staying on a, fl- a floor of a hotel and not leaving a hotel um, except when it was scheduled. Uh, that was an adjustment, but um, but I think the everyday protocols, the the discipline that they showed during the year helped them be able to handle what was required over the last you know week to two weeks as we've been here in, in Indianapolis. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Congrats on a great season. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be joined momentarily by Demetri Trice. We are now joined by Demetra Trice, and we'll begin the press conference. Again, media members, please use the raise hand function if you'd like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Jeff Patrakis, your line's open. Jeff Patrakis, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Demetra, you you talked about how this, this matchup between the guards, your guards and their guards, you and Brad did not shoot it well. Their guards made some plays. How, how good were they defensively, and how how tough was it to get open looks or looks that you're accustomed to hitting? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think we got quite a few good looks um, that we normally knock down, but um, they did a great job of, of pressuring us, um, getting us out of our comfort zone at times, and um, it just came down to making some plays, and they hit a couple shots that, that got them the lead back up to maybe double digits or whatnot, but... Um, at the end of the day, we, we just got to be able to make some plays happen and knock down some shots, um, and, and that's really what it came down to. Jim Polzine, please go ahead. Demetri, with all you guys being seniors, um, obviously a tough – what was the locker room like afterward? Can you kind of describe – I'm sure it was a very emotional setting. Yeah, definitely. With the with the older group and a lot of guys leaving um, as seniors, it was it was definitely emotional. Um, there was a lot of a lot of tears being being shed, but we know that this group is going to stick together after this. Um, there's still a lot of basketball to be played um, between between each of us, so um, we're going to hold our heads high. Um, a lot of people doubted us throughout the whole entire season, so 
Um, we're just going to come out of here and, and hold our heads high and get ready for the next step in life. Josh Schaefer, please go ahead. Yeah, Demetri, with the season as a whole, Josh Schaefer back here 24-7. Demetri, with the season as a whole, how would you sort of evaluate what happened on the court when it came to playing these better teams and kind of never getting over the hump? What sticks out to you when you when you think about these games? Um, honestly, it's hard to tell. Um, at times it was turnovers. At times it was not making shots. Um, so it just varies depending on who you were playing. Um, tonight it was a little bit of both. Uh, credit to Baylor. Obviously, they're a really great team. And um, every time that we, we made a mistake, they, they capitalized on it. So um, it, it, it's hard. It's a tough way to go out as a senior. But um, the journey's not over still. Tom Oates, please go ahead. Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Dimitri, do you think this team improved this season over last, over the way you played? especially in that last stretch late last season. Do you think you improved, this team improved? Um, I honestly do, uh, especially especially off the court. I mean, when, when you take it into account everything that we've been through um, and then obviously playing after a pandemic and being in, in a pandemic, it's it's kind of tough. And a lot of factors factor in on, on the season and um, a lot of things that were perceived as normal last year weren't normal this year. So. Um, it was a whole new setting, whole new, whole new way. I know we we came in um, one of the favorites in the in the NCAA, but um, there's a lot of factors outside of basketball that that played a factor into the whole entire season. A follow from Jeff Patrikas. Jeff, go ahead. Jeff Patrikas, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Dimitri, we do know that some of the guys, the young guys, will be back next year. Of that group, you know, and maybe some of the young people who will be coming in the program, what do they have to do to next next year to whatever it is, compete for a championship, get in the NC 2 a tournament? Who has to step forward? Yeah, I mean, obviously the guys that are um, here now, Johnny, um, T. Wall, Steven, and a couple of other freshmen obviously got a little taste of it. So um, those guys are going to be the leaders of the team next year and the guys that got a lot of the minutes that – that played this year are going to have to step up in, in a major way next year with us losing a lot of seniors. So um, obviously there's going to be good recruits coming in and a lot of hype around them. So um, all these older guys are, well, they're younger guys right now, but they're going to be considered older guys next year are going to have to step up in a, in a major way on the off season. Jim Polzine, please go ahead. Jim Bolsey, Wisconsin State Journal. Demetri, Greg kind of uh, subbed you guys out one by one late in the game when it was when it was basically over. What was going through your mind then, knowing that that was that was it for you personally after a five year career? Um, honestly, it didn't it didn't hit me until I started shaking the hands of the coaches and the players or and whatnot. But um, it is just tough. It's tough to go out like that as a senior and. Um, time time really flies by. Um, I know I've been here for a while, and a lot of guys are probably tired of seeing my face. But it really felt like uh, it was it was a blur. So uh, I'm ex I was excited to be here. I'm I'm still excited to be part of the Badger family, and um, I'll always be a Badger. Darius Joshua, please go ahead. They do not Dimitri trick. Uh, Darius Joshua, CBS 58, Milwaukee. Um, I wonder what do you kind of what we remember most about these last two weeks where you had the Big Ten tournament in Indianapolis and then you stayed here in a most unusual NCAA tournament. And obviously I know you're, you're leaving earlier than you would like to, but what do you, what will you remember about these two weeks? Um, honestly, being in the hotel with the guys, we, we tried to make it as fun as possible. Um, being out of Madison, Wisconsin in that bubble and moving into this bubble. So it's been, it's been a bumpy ride the last couple of weeks, but I think, um, our team and our managers and our coaches did a great job of um, making it feel at home and, and lightening the mood a little bit, whether that's playing games um, as a team or going outside and getting some fresh air. I think we did we, we used it um, to our advantage and made the most of it. Any final questions? All right. Thank you, Dimitri. Appreciate your time. Congrats on a great season. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That concludes the Wisconsin Post Game News Conference. A transcript of Coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.veritone.com. Again, NCAA.veritone.com.
www.thinkingdigital.com. Thank you.